Welcome to Rad Recaps. In today's video, we will be recapping a disturbing horror film named Holidays. It's made up of eight short stories and will leave you quaking in your boots. What are you waiting for? Let's get started. Story one. The first story begins with a girl named Maxine. She sat on a long bench in the middle of a locker room, carving a heart with the word coach in the middle. Cutting to the next scene, we see her atop a diving board. Her coach Rockwell looks on with disappointment as she's clearly too nervous to jump off. Some of her classmates, one of them named Heidi, begins to taunt her for not jumping. A few moments pass before she is pushed off the diving board by Heidi. Her body becomes limp as she begins to drown in the pool below, but is eventually saved by her diving instructor. Coming back to consciousness, she is taunted for wanting to kiss the coach. In the locker room, we see Maxine isolated. She is looking lifeless as Heidi's group of friends behind her are laughing and joking around. Cutting to the coach's office, we see he is stressing about his heart problem. Back in the locker room, we see Heidi taunting Maxine. She tells him how the coach will choose her and not Maxine. Rockwell eavesdrops on the conversation in the girls' locker room. To console Maxine, he sneaks into the girls' locker room and leaves a secret Valentine's letter in Maxine's locker. As the students begin to leave school, we see Maxine in a dark hoodie following Heidi through the woods. He chases her down through the bracken. Frightened, Heidi falls over into a pit of mud, after which Maxine approaches her and smacks her over the head with a brick. To finish the job, she pulls out a sharp box cutter and kills her. Cutting to the diving coach, we see him sat on his bed preparing to go to a fundraising event. Upon hearing the doorbell ring, he opens the door and is greeted by the horrific sight of a bloodied Maxine. She stares deep into Rockwell with a creepy grin and then offers the heart of Heidi as a Valentine's gift. Story 2 the next story begins with various young students sat in a class, all looking toward a projector. The teacher, Elizabeth, is showing the children a documentary about St. Patrick's Day. It's conveying the legend of how a man rid Ireland of snakes. Later, we see a young girl, Grania, sat by herself in the middle of a play area. Elizabeth approaches her in an attempt to cheer her up, but she quickly walks off, wanting nothing to do with the situation. Later, we see Grania leave what appears to be a dried up grass snake on her desk, along with a letter for her St. Patrick's Day project. She leaves the room and peers inside to see what the teacher's reaction will be. She lifts it up, horrified, and notices a note on the paper before stating, only your deepest wish can make me smile. After Elizabeth has a night of heavy drinking, she awakens in her car, startled again by the sight of another piece of dried up snakeskin. As the camera pans away from the car, we see she is surrounded by a large row of trolleys resembling that of a snake. Later in the supermarket, Elizabeth encounters Grania bumping into her. She jumps in horror. Grania hugs her, smiling creepily. Elizabeth, thinking she has had some unusual changes in her body recently, goes to the doctor for a checkup. She finds out she is pregnant, and for a short while, she is obviously over the moon. However, this is short-lived. She isn't pregnant with a human, she's in fact pregnant with a snake. Cutting to the next scene, we see Elizabeth sat at her desk, marking various work from her students. She eventually begins to mark Grania's work and is horrified at what appears to be a drawing of her giving birth to a snake. Upon seeing this, she projectile vomits a thick black sludge all over the table. Looking up at Grania, she notices that she is giggling at the situation, which is obviously rather odd, seeing as all the other kids are screaming. In anger, Elizabeth stands up, walks toward Grania, and tells her to stop. She continues laughing, so Grania slaps her across the face, and even then, she continues laughing. The film cuts to a year later. It's evident that the snake has gotten bigger inside of her, and as a result, it's clear her behavior is changing. Being a devout Christian, she refuses the advice of her family and decides against getting an abortion. As her pregnancy date gets closer and closer, she begins wearing odd, old-fashioned style clothing. After 400 days go by, the birth of the snake begins. As the snake starts to come out of her body due to her luring it out with a mouse, she is rendered unconscious. Later, we see Grania and Elizabeth walking through a wonderful piece of grassland. She's led to a mysterious man. He turns out to be the father of Grania, the leader of a cult. It also becomes clear that he had intercourse with Elizabeth, causing her to give birth to this snake. She accepts her status into the cult, and after looking at her newborn snake, swears to treat it like any other child. Later, we see that a nun has replaced Elizabeth as the teacher. 
Grania gives her, as she did Elizabeth, the same card with the dried up snake skin on it. The next story begins with a mother tucking her daughter into bed. Because Easter is just around the corner, the mother lets her know that the Easter Bunny will be coming tonight to give her chocolate. After being told that she must be asleep when the Easter Bunny comes, she begins to get frightened. The mother helps calm her down by reminding her of the importance of the Easter Bunny in relation to their religion. After not being able to sleep, the girl goes downstairs to pour herself a drink. As she's glugging her drink, it's clear that something is moving behind her. Hearing odd noises, she begins to investigate. And upon entering her living room, she sees a cute baby chick. But upon further investigation, she spots a horrible human-like bunny. Terrified, she tries to run away. But before she can make it to her room, the disgusting-looking creature stops her in her tracks and tells her that now she's seen him, she has no choice but to take his place as the Easter Bunny. Eventually, the bunny makes her close her eyes and forces her to consume an egg, which ultimately morphs her into a bunny. The mother awakens and begins looking for her daughter. Unable to find her, the story ends. Story 4 The next story begins with a character named Kate. She is in a doctor's office, complaining about how she is continuously getting pregnant even after the use of multiple levels of protection. The doctor becomes convinced that she has no control over her status of fertility, and as a result, advises her to go to a fertility camp that her sister runs. Arriving at the camp, she's surrounded by women who have the opposite problem to her. They cannot get pregnant. As she begins conversing with another woman, Kate tells how she's continuously getting pregnant. Irritated and feeling disrespected, the woman walks off. Later that night, in the middle of the desert, Kate is seen attending a ritual, during which a creepy old woman approaches her and exclaims how she's a gateway. Frightened by the whole ordeal, Kate tries to leave. She is ultimately forced to stay and made to partake in an orgy with the other women and a man. She enters a state of paralysis, and in the next scene, we see her wake up. Lying in bed, she's greeted by one of the women. She tells her that everything is okay and that she will be looked after. The women also lets her know that there are witches who need her to get pregnant for them. Later, she attempts to escape from the witches, but miraculously, whilst running off, she enters into labor. The witches attempt to help her give birth, but they are horrified by the sight of a huge adult-sized arm appearing out of her. Story 5 The next story begins with a character who has just arrived home from her work as a teacher. Before she makes it to the front door, she is confronted by a package which is apparently from her father. Confused, due to the fact that she hasn't had any converse with him since she was a child, she opens the package and finds a cassette player with earphones. After listening to the tape, she is surprised to hear that her father wants to meet her in the spot they used to play out when she was a child. This confuses her. She's conflicted as to what this all means due to her mother telling her when she was younger her father had died. Ultimately, she decides to make her way to the spot her father instructed. With the cassette player in hand, she realizes that the tape was recorded when she was a child. This is made clear due to her hearing her own voice in the background. Eventually, she approaches the spot. It's an odd abandoned building which she remembers going into when she was younger with her father. Through the cassette player, her father professes that he is sorry for leaving her that day, but promises they'll get a chance to meet again now. As she makes her way deeper into the building, the scene cuts to the driver's seat of her car, where we see her mother is trying to ring her. Wandering deeper into the abandoned building, she approaches a mysterious room. As she enters, she sees a dark figure. Horrified, a bald, pale figure appears. She drops the cassette player, screaming with the final pieces of audio stating, Together. Story 6 the next story begins with a character named Ian. He is effectively a pimp running an online sex cam service. As he arrives home, we see three girls, Holly, Bree, and Serena. Serena is in tears because she's been called horrible things by a client online. In response, Ian asks them why they aren't working. One of them exclaims how it's Halloween, so they shouldn't have to work. After Ian verbally abuses them, the women let him know that abusing three women is a bad idea because it can create a coven. Ian, angry, tries to force himself upon Serena. One of the girls thankfully knocks him out from behind, and when he awakens, he's in a room only with underwear on. To his horror, he finds out over chat on a laptop that the women have superglued a vibrator up his ass, which is connected to a car battery. The laptop has a live feed, which the women have access to and over chat instruct him to show them his vagina. Confused, he rips off his pants thinking that's what they want. Disappointed, the women slide him a knife under his door, after which they turn the car battery up to full power, effectively killing him. 
A woman knocks on the door asking about the job Ian invited her to. The women tell her that Ian is no longer part of management due to cutbacks. Story 7 The next story begins with a character named Pete Gunderson. He's banging on a shop window in an attempt to buy the last remaining pair of virtual glasses for his son. Unfortunately, somebody else has already picked up the last box and has paid for it. As the man leaves, Pete begs the man for glasses, stating he will give him double the amount for them. As Pete walks off, he's startled by the sight of the man who bought the glasses having a heart attack on the floor. Having to make a choice between stealing the glasses or saving the man, he decides to grab the glasses from his car and makes a run for it, leaving the man dead on the floor. On Christmas Day, we see Pete and his wife Sarah giving his son the glasses. Intrigued by the prospect of them, due to his son stating that they give you the ability to see your thoughts, he tries them on. Soon thereafter, he sees a stripper virtually in front of him. Later that night, Pete sneaks into his son's room to try on the glasses. At first, he visualizes being given oral sex from a woman, but soon thereafter, the visual shifts to the perspective of the man who died on the floor as a result of Pete stealing the glasses instead of helping him. The scene cuts to a visual of him looking up at two doctors, both stating that if the dying man received help, he could have been saved. Later, due to Pete not logging out of his glasses, we see his wife complaining to him about the visual he left behind. He asks him why he didn't save the dying man, to which he responded that he's sick of being nice and hates seeing people like him always getting what they want. Oddly, Sarah is turned on by this, and the two have intercourse. Later, Pete tries on the glasses again. Sarah, forgetting to log out of them, had left behind her visual. To Pete's horror, the visual shows Sarah torturing and killing her boss due to not giving her a bonus. Story 8 the next segment begins by showing a man named Reggie murdering a woman. We find out that he's a psychopath who finds women online to eventually kill them. Upon meeting a woman online named Jean, he meets her for a date at a local restaurant. Reggie, due to possessing strange mannerisms and being very odd in general, isn't having a great date with her. Out of pity, she invites him back to her flat. Jean eventually starts making provocative moves on Reggie, and after he tells her he needs to go to the toilet, he gets his chloroform ready so he can render her unconscious. To his horror, when he opens the medicine cabinet, he's greeted by the sight of severed limbs. Eventually, Jean comes storming into the bathroom with an axe and begins to attack him. He manages to escape out of the bathroom but falls on the floor, getting his leg severed by Jean in the process. He crawls to his jacket, grabs his revolver, and points it at Jean. He fires it, but it's unloaded. Now trapped in a corner, Jean axes his skull, splitting his head open in two. As the new year rolls in, we can see Jean dancing with her axe. Did you enjoy the video? Leave a comment below about what you thought of it. You can watch this movie from the links below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching Red Recaps. See you in the next video.